doing? Hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's episode of Tactics, we'll be going over Maurizio Pochettino's 4-2-3-1 Chelsea tactics. So, if you can, before we hop into the video, it would mean the world to me if you could hit that like button, please. Subscribe if you are new. That'd be fan damn fantastic. And then let's hop on right into what we're about to do. So, we've got Jackson up front. It was Amanda Broja last night, but we'll go with Jackson because he's more or less going to be the number one starting striker. We've got Fernandez in behind him, Mudrik and Palmer on the right wing, and Mudrik on the left wing, obviously. We've got Captain Gallagher, as well as Caicedo in the double pivots. We've got Colwell, Silva, Visasi, and Gusto in the defense, and then we've got Robert Sanchez between the sticks. In the subs area, we've got Sterling, Broja, Madueke, um, Ogachukwu, Petrovic, Banashile, and Kukubrela. Then in the reserves, we've got Chalaba, Matson, Chilwell, Lavia. A lot of injuries to this team, which is probably why they haven't had the best start to their season. Although I do think it's a bit of a betting in process for Pochettino and what they're looking to do. We've also got Reese James, um, Nkunku, Fofana, all injured out and it's not great. Um, Chukwameka as well. So there are some good players in this team. And if you are looking to play a career mode with Chelsea, I think it can be very, very rewarding. For yourself. So for the formation, I haven't changed much except for the fact that I have changed the likes of Conor Gallagher to a central midfielder. So the formation is a 4-2-3-1 wide, but it's got one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, one centre defensive midfielder, one central midfielder, one attacking midfielder, then two wingers and one striker. So for the tactical vision, I could not really decide what best suits what Chelsea are looking to do. They they don't really have that ticky tucker style to them, or the gagan pressing style, or the kick and rush or the wing play. I mean, wing play was the closest, but I just decided, you know what? I think for Chelsea so far, what we've seen, it's more of a custom build. So that's why I've gone with tactical vision speed set to custom. As for the defensive pressure, it is set to heavy touch. You do want them to try and keep their shape, keep their structure, make sure that they're very hard to break down. At the moment, Chelsea are not trying to concede goals. They're trying to just, if we can score a goal, we will, and then we're gonna hold that and, and try and keep that. So they're going to look to try and stay for, for formationally strong, I, I, the formation is not even a real word, but structurally strong, make sure that they're hard to break down. That's why the likes of um, Gallagher and Caicedo are playing as a double pivot and not as a as a three in midfield with just uh, Caicedo as the, the one out and out DM. Then as for the team width, we've got it set to 40. It's a nice flaring, but still compact system that can look to just flare out a bit more if, if need be. Mark those little zones almost. But the depth is set to 65. It does help, you know, protect the likes of um, Thiago Silva in the back line. Of course, he is 39 years of age, so he is getting up there in age. He doesn't have the, the speed in order to track back as much in, in order for Chelsea to play such a high line. I will say this, though. If the likes of Fofana or Benashile come into the team, you can probably bump that up by another 10 to about 75. But because we've got Thiago Silva in the team, I've gone with a 65 depth. As for the builder play, we have seen that Chelsea look to try and transition the ball very quickly with the likes of Mudrik or Sterling or one of your wingers. They'll look to try and transition with them as fast as possible, getting the ball up, moving it quickly uh, between the lines and trying to exploit the opposition at times and try and catch them out more times than not. As for the chance creation, I have the set of forward runs. You want your forwards making those runs in behind, trying to exploit the space between the goalkeeper and the defense of the opposition, of course. And then finally, for the width, it is a very narrow team. Um, when in attack, they try to focus a lot of their, their possession in the center of the park at times and then flare it out either to the fullback or the wing at times and then try and drive it on into the middle of the park. So that's why I've gone with a 40 width. And then players in the box, they try and flood the box. I, I did note this last night, especially with the last Conor Gallagher. He was getting into the box more times than not. And you'll see with his instructions, we want him to make those advancing runs into that attacking third. But for players in the box, I would set to seven. And then corners and free kicks, as for always, are set to four. So, as for always, we're starting off with the goalkeeper. He's set to come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper. We saw last season Robert Sanchez, when he did play for Brighton, he was a very good sweeper keeper. And Chelsea, when they bought him, I think that was their plan with him going forward. And he's also very good at claiming those crosses in the air. He's very tall as well, got a nice long wingspan, is very capable of claiming aerial balls from corners, free kicks, you name it, he's going to claim it. And then, of course, being a sweeper keeper, you are playing a fairly hard line at times. I mean, it's not the highest of lines, it's, a, it's a, on the higher side of mid block. But you do need your goalkeeper to be able to come out, save those balls, collect the balls off of his line, and then circulate them back into possession. And then, as for Thiago Silva and Desarsi, they are set to their basic set of instructions. Both of them, I also know, are not the fastest of players. Desarsi, he's not that quick, as well as Thiago Silva. It goes without saying, Thiago Silva's age and Desarsi is just 
he was never meant to be a quick centre back. Then we'll move on wide to our fullbacks. Both Colwell and Gusto have different roles. I think it goes without saying Colwell is a centre back, playing as a left back. And I think eventually when Ben Chilwell um, or uh, uh, Matson comes back into the team, the left hand side will change and more or less try and mirror what the right hand side side does. But as for Gusto, he said to join the attack and overlap, he winds up making those bombing run runs, advancing past the right wing, creating space down the right hand side for your, your attacking players and looking to whip in those crosses. So either Reese James or Gusto, they'll have the same set of instructions and then of course he said to stick to position. Then moving over to the left hand side, a very balanced approach for this because of course he is a centre back and you don't want him advancing too far up the field all the time. I mean, last night Colwell, he was feeling a bit more confident, he was advancing slightly higher up the field, but in, in saying that, in previous games he hasn't always looked to advance so far, which is why for his attacking runs I've gone with a balanced attack, so sometimes he will look to advance slightly higher up, other times he'll look to just stay back, be a bit more defensively solid, keeping his shape, keeping his structure next to the likes of Thiago Silva and Caicedo at times. Normal interceptions are said to be on for him and having a mixed run type. So we, I, I saw last night he, he collected the ball on the, on the, the left hand side and he made a diagonal run into the midfield, creating a lot of havoc for Fulham. It was very, very nice to see it. It's, it's something that Brighton looked to do with their fullbacks, have their fullbacks cut inside and create havoc and, and stress for the opposition's back line. And then uh, he wants him to step up, he wants him to be aggressively imposing himself on the opposition's back line at times. Moving on into the midfield, we've got Caicedo, he's into cut pass lanes, having a balanced attack, so sometimes he will look to advance further forward, but he is going to have the role of being the DM in the team, making sure he's trying to protect the back four times, making sure he's trying to get in the way of the opposition's build-up in the, their attacking phases. Normal exceptions are said to be on form, you can go with aggressive, but I've gone with normal because you don't want him to be um, aggressively chasing the ball too much. Stick to position and then cover the wing. As for Conor Gallagher, he said to get forward. He wants him almost playing next to um, Enzo Fernandez at times, but he will start off uh, as a deeper player in the build of play, getting forward, as well as he will look to advance into the box. He will look to be that, that extra player, that extra midfielder that makes that run deeper into the attacking third. Aggressive interceptions for Conor Gallagher, though, they are said to be on. He brings a lot of pace and power and energy to the games, and I think that's what Pochettino loves so much about him. Um, as for his defensive position, it's said to cover the wing, and then freedom, uh, positioning freedom, sorry, it's said to stick to position. You don't want him to have a freer role here and there, because Enzo Fernandez, he is said to have that free role. He is said to not have too many defensive chores that he needs to almost pick up. It's, and you know what's crazy? Enzo Fernandez very much reminds me of Paul Pogba when he was at Manchester United. It was, you know, he doesn't have the team around him, he doesn't have the, the structure, the formation doesn't suit him. And now we see Enzo Fernandez playing as the out and out attacking midfielder. He doesn't have to have too many defensive chores. He's got the likes of Conor Gallagher and Caicedo behind him. So more or less what you're looking to do is have him sit just in that hole, just in behind the striker and have him just be the chief creator. Doesn't have to do much going backwards. He does sometimes, yes, but he doesn't have to always. And I think that will probably get the best out of Enzo Fernandez going forward. It will be very interesting to see though what happens when Lavia comes back because I can see a midfield of Caicedo, Lavia, and Enzo Fernandez, but neither of them have that energy that uh, Gallagher does. I mean, maybe Caicedo, but it, it, it will be very, very interesting to see what Pochettino does to try and get the best out of that midfield. But anyway, speaking of Enzo, he's said to having a basic defensive support. You don't always want him coming back, but you don't want him just to stay forward. You want him to sometimes drop a bit deeper, get on the ball, and then try and create for. The, uh, the offensive line going forward, stay on the edge of the box, so he's not going to be that guy that gets into the box trying to attack those crosses, he's going to more or less look to try and create on the edge of the area and then free roam. You want him to have those little pockets of space popping up in and around those spaces to try and get on the wall and then create for others, and then normal interceptions are set to be on. So moving out wide to Mikhailo Mudrik, he's attacking a basic defensive support, not always looking to help his fullback out, but more times than not, he will do the defensive chores that needs to be done, especially on that left-hand side. Um, as for his chance creation, he does look to hold the whip more times than not, but other times he will look to cut inside a bit more, get shots off for himself, try and create opportunities and scoring opportunities for himself. Getting in behind is essential, he is very quick, very pacey. Pochettino, I think he knows this and he wants to try and exploit the opposition's backline with the likes of Mikhailo Mudrik's sheer pace and power. As for his interceptions, it's set to normal and then supports on crosses. You want him getting into those attacking areas in the box for those crosses. Moving out to the right hand side now, we have got Cole Palmer. He is set to come back on defense, so he will look to help that right wing back or that right back more times than not because they do look to advance further on 
and make those a- attacking runs more times than not. So you need your rifle to consistently be able to track back, make sure that he's picking up the runners that are trying to make those runs in behind. As for his transcreation, it's also said to having a balance width, so sometimes it'll look to cut inside a bit more, especially if you do have a, a bombing on right back and you do want your right wing to come inside a bit more. But at the same time, he does look to sometimes hold that right wing position down, hold the width on, on the right hand side. As for his support runs, I haven't said to a balance support as well. You don't want him just making sure he's making those runs in behind. Sometimes he will come short, try and link up play with the midfield. And then as for his interceptions, we saw last night, especially against Tim Green, he was able to close him down effectively, get the ball, and then literally play in just the easiest five-yard pass to Broja for the goal. So for his interceptions, I've got him set to aggressive. He does still have that city pressing mentality in him. And then for his support of crosses, you also want him getting into the box. I would also say, though, for my away game, it would probably be the same set of instructions, so there's no real changes for that. And then finally, we've got Nick Jackson. Or potentially Amanda Broja, depending on who you would like to go with, or potentially another striker of your choice. It's your ch- obviously it's your choice if you're playing in career mode, completely up to you. But for Jackson, he's said to have a balance with so sometimes looking to make those wider runs, but more times than not, he will look to hold down the center of the park, waiting for those crosses to be fed into him. What I do like is though he does look to sometimes drop off and start his runs either from the right hand side or the left hand side, which is also why. The balance width does make the most sense for him, but more importantly, his attacking runs are set to mix because he can be that holder player, that target man, born to feast, pass it off to either a Fernandez or a Mudrick or something like that, get them involved in the play, or essentially, he does have the pace and the ball knowledge to make those runs in behind, trying to exploit that back line at times, and I quite like that about him. As for his interceptions, he is set to aggressive. I mean, he does have a very aggressive mentality. He has picked up a lot of yellow cards to begin the season, and that's why he missed the game against Fulham. But he does have an aggressive mentality. He does look to try and lead the press as best as possible. And then he will also look to stay forward. He's going to be an outlet for trying to link up play going forward in the transitions or potentially with the slow build of plays that you may want to have. So yes, my dudes, that is my version of Maurizio Pochettino's 4-2-3-1 formation in FC24. If you can, hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you are new. And until the next time, my dudes, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.